So I'm going to talk about diminished chords. Now diminished chords are kind of um, a bit of a, a strong sound. It's a bit like a truffle oil or something. It just kind of, you just need a bit of a diminished and then suddenly you're in that silent movie world. Now I mean, Wes made a lot of mileage out of that silent movie world. So I think one reason why diminished chord sounds so kind of like is it's completely parallel motion. So it kind of has that kind of really striking thing. Any kind of parallel motion really, you can hear it right away. So if I play like parallel triads. Which I mean, that sounds like sword and sandal music. So we've gone from, you know, vintage horror movies to sword and sandal music. I mean, they're, they're good cheap tricks to giving a certain sound, you know? Uh, parallel seconds and things like that. Obviously you can sound modern and discordant even when they're relatively kind of in the context of a not horrendous sounding chord. I mean, obviously if I do something like this, then it starts to sound very dislocated from tonality. Um, even if it's something like you know, we're, we're, we're obviously entering a realm of something quite weird with that, but <clears throat> um, obviously parallel movement is not always what we, what we want, and sometimes it's nice to have uh, a bit of non-parallel movement, and a very easy way to incorporate that into diminished chords is simply borrowing a note, and usually I do this to the top voice, so if I'm playing, for instance, you know, a nice A minor ninth kind of sound. I could usually use a, in this case, F sharp diminished seventh to sub in for a D7 flat nine, and then play uh, some kind of nice G major chord with the G on the <coughs> on the on the treble. Um, but it sounds a little bit more interesting if I kind of don't make all the notes go to that next chord right away. So what I'm doing there is I'm taking that basic diminished chord on the bottom. Delaying that transition. I can even add in some dramatic half steps and then go into the G. So that this this kind of thing where you kind of get, get to a sort of halfway house to into two chords. the effect of the progression a little bit. Um, in classical music these are known as suspensions because they're suspended from one chord to the next. Uh, the obvious example of that is suspending the uh, fourth into a into a major chord, which is where sus4 comes from. So for instance, you know, if I go from a, uh, a G um, a G major, is it? Well, yeah, G7. C back into a G, a G major. That kind of sound is very familiar to us from Western tonal music, and that's a simple example of a suspension, but of course, you know, suspensions could be anything. So, this kind of effect is nice. So, you can take diminished chords and you can practice. diatonic notes on top, so in this case we're in the key of G major, I think. Yeah, G major. So, I mean, if we build that diminished seventh chord on the uh, D7 flat 9, we've got that one, that one, that one, that one, and then we can just run diatonic scale notes between them. Okay, so 
Um, I find that they're, they're, they're kind of something which doesn't really get touched upon that much, and actually they, they, they do crop up all the time. For instance, you know, at the end of uh, T for Two. There's, there's kind of transitional chord, which is basically a sort of diminished, B flat diminished seventh with a F sharp in the treble. Doesn't really have a good name. chord chart would just look too complicated so most people just try to write like B flat diminished seventh with an F sharp in the melody and leave it at that you know um, they probably wouldn't bother writing out a special chord symbol for it so all that stuff is quite uh, you know good at sort of melting that you know Stark parallelism of the diminished seventh chord. Um, another way in which these kind of borrowed notes often get used is to give uh, the diminished seventh chord a more complex character. So, um, harmonically speaking. So, for instance, in the context of a um, excuse me, in a, of a uh, D seven chord, if I put this on a sharp diminished seventh and then raise the raise up to the next diatonic note, say. So they've got a B in the treble. This then becomes a, you know, with a D on bottom. That becomes a D7, uh, or a D13 flat 9 chord, which is a little bit more complex uh, than the usual D7 flat 9. Um, and it's fantastically useful for tunes like all of me. <laughs> you know, where you want to get that kind of uh, cadence when you've got a third in the melody, for instance. Um. So, um, I find them very useful for that. Now, um, the way I first came across this really was actually as a lesson with um, Phil Robson years and years ago before I could really actually play jazz guitar. And he suggested that's their playing diminished seventh. I mean, at that point, I couldn't even play diminished seventh. So, <laughs> you know, it was it was a sort of group workshop. Uh, uh, so it wasn't teaching me specifically, but um, he suggested um, uh, instead of using a straightforward diminished chord like this one, that's kind of shenanigans. What you might want to use instead of diminished major seventh, which is this shape. Where it comes from. Um, 
but I'm kind of less interested in that, more interested in the voice feeling. The same way, you know, if I've got some of them are going to be less diatonic than others. So if you want to start borrowing notes and creating this kind of diminished scale harmony, then all we have to do is just take one of the notes of the diminished chord, which is what we've done here, in this case it's the So watching, I uh, hope you find it useful. <laughs>